All right, today is the day. We're going to Chiswick to see the Grenadier. Just fire this up to just keep it, get it running for a minute or two. And then we hit the road. It is looking ready. It's about um, 15 miles there, 15 miles back, roughly. And uh, my spare wheel, I'm trying to figure out uh, whether to put it on the bonnet, but these won't come up enough because I've got uh, 20 offset on the wheels. So temporarily, I put it there for now. But my plan is to eventually probably get a rear wheel carrier and put it on the back, on the attached to, to the chassis. But yeah, we're good to go and uh, let's do this. Here we go. So I've got pretty much everything ready. Uh, it's warmed up for a while. I put the choke down now. The choke was off earlier. It's running smoothly. But I figured I'll just check my fuel first. Not too much. I need to add extra fuel to that. So I'll find somewhere to stop and top up. And then we'll get on our way. But I'm excited. So finally, we go in there. Yes, let's, uh, let's do this. So I went over a bump on the road and I started hearing Check this out. You see that? It's come undone. <laughs> it's come undone, that's crazy. Yeah, gotta find a way to fix that. So I am literally under the Land Rover as we speak. I think what happened was, as I went over a bump, this strap, where is it? This strap came undone and then yanked this off, this bit off. So this came un undone. I've now used my tools, the original, or, original tools that came with it to fix it. So hopefully it works now. All right, moment of truth. Let's see if it's fixed or not. Please work, please work. Yes! Come on, Lex! I literally can't emphasize enough the, like how these things were built. Like this, this, this set is 54 years. The exhaust just went off. And with these things, I was able to fix it. It's, it's crazy. It just worked. Oof. We made it. I do not know why I decided to drive through central London traffic on a Saturday. My right kneecap is in, is in serious pain, uh, but made it, had a breakdown, fixed it. Uh, now here, and you can see the Grenadier thing over there. I'm going to go inside shortly and uh, yeah, show you what it's all about. So we made it. <laughs> all right, I have a surprise for you. I have seen it. Are you ready to see it? Check this out. Just first, first impressions, first sight. Check it out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and just to try to so uh, we should have demos in twice different regions around the This is just so real. Just being able to touch. Just touch it. That's incredible. So very first Let's zoom out. Just look at that. That is incredible. Incredible. I'm in love. I am in love. What do we have here? That's a. Uh, 265-7017 sort of wolf style uh, rims of course KM2s oh, I really want to get under this I want to see everything it's incredible back to the interior quickly just look at that these are Recaro sets. Okay, I'll show you more later. 
that just looks bad. You can see this probably easily taken off. That's over there. This sort of looks a bit like a, the new Defender look in a way. And of course the grab handle on the passenger side, but it doesn't seem to be on the driver side. Uh, of course you've got the raised air intake over there. The lights, I quite like this because this means we can attach uh, sort of light protections uh, onto this, which is great. Of course you've got these two, we've got the radiator as well. It's incredible. One of the things I actually haven't mentioned yet is the uh, the protection offering. The fact that he gets the breastplate or the underside protection all part of the sale. I think that's pretty impressive. Yeah. Hi everyone, just to say, this is Akta. Akta works for Ineos Grenadier and uh, I have the pleasure of being allocated to Akta to take me around and Akta will be showing us around the car. Uh, we'll take, tell us about the details, everything we need to know. He's the man to speak to. So I'm so grateful for Akta uh, for being the, the man, the go-to man uh, for us today. <laughs> the go-to man. <laughs> cool. Hi, my name's Akta. I'm from Ineos and I'll talk you around the Grenadier. So if you know anything about the uh, Grenadier, you'll know that Magnastar have been developing the vehicle. They've been building G-Wagons for the last 40 odd years. So they have a massive amount of information and, and experience on how to build a proper off-road vehicle so with regards to technical specs hopefully it'll answer a few questions that you might have about the vehicle itself but we'll start with the chassis so the chassis is a box section steel chassis it's four mil in places sorry three and a half mil in places so basically between the wheelbase it's three and a half mil and then you have the crumple zones as well uh, people ask a lot of questions about rust protection and will it rust like my defender uh, it won't <laughs> Reason being is the first step of the corrosion protect protection is they place a car uh, in a chemical bath known as electrophoretic dip, uh, dipping. They pass an electric current through that chemically coats the steel uh, and then it becomes impervious to moisture and oxygen externally. So that's your first line of defense. Then the extern uh, external panels or the exterior of the chassis is powder coated, which is about 30 times more durable than paint. Internally, it's cavity waxed as well. So that's straight from the factory. So it's done the best possible techniques and methodology to make sure it doesn't rust. You do, if you do use off-road, use the vehicle for off-roading, I would always suggest going for the full underbody protection that is optionally available as well. That's three and a half mil thick and that will withstand 4.2 tonnes of pressure per square inch if you were to beat yourself on a rock and just rock back and forth. Uh, again, anything, if you are going to be using it in anger or as the vehicle is designed to be used, i.e. off-road and, and just in mountains, wherever it may be, the more physical layers of protection you have between yourself, the chassis and what have you, just means the vehicle lasts that bit longer as well. I mean, in a commercial setting, the vehicle is, will last 15, 20 years plus. Again, that's a very, very conservative uh, estimate. If you look at how defenders, they're still going after all these years. Uh, <laughs> bits get replaced, but they just keep chugging on. This vehicle is 
again, 21st century technology in terms of just its methodology and build quality and what have you. So the chassis, it's not going to rust first and foremost. The body is a galvanized steel body shell, aluminium hanging panels, so bonnet, doors and tailgate. Uh, again, it's galvanized, electrophoretically coated, then the paint process takes place. So again, it's very well placed to uh, not fall apart like a Defender. I know I keep <laughs> hating on Defenders, but I mean, Defenders are incredible cars, but equally uh, they have their shortcomings and it's very old engineering versus what can be done and achieved today. So uh, when Jim Ratcliffe decided to build a Grenadier, he wanted the absolute best of the best. He has no alliances or allegiances to anyone except himself. So being the richest man in the UK, that does help. But also, to give you an idea of how much he loves Defenders and utility vehicles, he recently found a second ever Defender that came off the production line. So he found it in a barn in Scotland, he's recovered it, he's restoring it. So he just loves the idea of people using their cars as they should be. So when he developed the vehicle, he owns 30% of the Mercedes Formula One team. He could have gone Mercedes engines, uh, but he wanted proven technology. So he went with BMW engines, B57, B58, petrol or diesel, three litre turbos, both Euro 6 compliant. So for those people who are worried about emissions and what have you, it is the current up-to-date emission standard uh, across Europe and UK. So uh, you'll be able to drive into those clean air zones that you'll find in all the major cities that are happening, uh, taking place now, because again, the government has dictated it. Now the vehicles or the engines, they've been tuned for torque. So the petrol has 450 Newton meters of torque. The diesel has 540 Newton meters of torque, all developed at 1700 RPM. The net result is the car's about, the engine is the most chilled out engine in the world. It will literally tick over at 1700 RPM, regardless of whether you're off-road, on-road, and that increases the durability and the longevity of the engine. Uh, again, a conservative figure, the engine will do a quarter of a million miles without breaking the sweat. Again, because it's unstressed. It, they've reduced the horsepower, increased the torque, and torque is what you need. Easiest way to think of it, horsepower is, uh, the more horsepower you have, the higher your top speed, the more torque you have, the quicker you get there. Because you're towing stuff and you're pulling stuff, the more torque you have, the quicker it can get, to, get you moving up to speed. Uh, so the engines of BMW, uh, the transmission is an eight speed ZF transmission. It's the same gearbox that they use in every Rolls Royce, Mercedes, Audi, BMW, Alfa Romeo, Quadrifoglio. The gearbox itself can handle a thousand newton meters of torque straight from the factory. This engine, even running at 540, it is nowhere near the limits of the gearbox and the transmission. So again, it just ensures durability. We'll move to the inside and show you what the inside looks like. So this one we've mentioned already, this is a, an interior prototype built by Pininfarina. It's probably the most expensive car I've ever been near. It's probably a couple of million pounds to uh, replace if anything ever did happen to it. So unfortunately, Lex is not allowed to sit inside this car <laughs> amongst other reasons, but uh, he cannot be trusted, but no, he can be. So uh, you'll notice as you open the car, you'll see the Recaro seats are standard. Obviously the sign saying, please do not sit on <laughs> in the seats but Recaro seats are a standard uh, they're hydrophobically coated so they're water repellent and stain resistant as well if you are going to be using it off-road again it's always advisable just to put some form of covers on it as well now you can see the interior it's carpeted uh, if you go for the utility version uh, or even a commercial a passenger version as well, you can specify uh, the utility floors, which are rubber floors, and you have drain plugs underneath the seats. So what that means is you can hose out the interior. Uh, your switches on your center console, that's your day-to-day -day controls. So everything can be worked with a gloved hand. Uh, they're all IP rated, so again, they're all splash proof, so you can hose it out. I wouldn't take a jet wash to it because I mean, you are just uh, pushing the limits of its water resistance in that respect. But uh, the whole utility of the vehicle is for, for that exact reason alone. So you can hose it out. You have a manually operated center diff locker standard, high range and low range. Uh, your eight speed ZF transmission, as you can see in front of you. Uh, and when you move to the roof panel, which is just above 
you will see lots of different buttons and functions. So this is for when, for example, you specify the optional front and rear diff locks. So you can specify the front and rear diff locks if you're an extreme off-roader or overlander like Lex. Uh, if you have any electrical accessories that you wish to add to the vehicle, i.e. tow uh, bars, winches, auxiliary lighting, light bars, you name it, bolt it on and you'll find various points within the body shell that you can plug into the electrical harness which basically means you don't have to hack into the electrics which means the vehicle will be more reliable in the long run you can see with the grenadier panel uh, the blank panel in the center of the roof panel if you run a huge amount of accessories what you can do is also buy uh, a pack of switches they're all pre-fused high capacity switches so again unscrew that panel, bolt in the switch pack, and then you can run more electrical accessories as you need. When we move to the rear, this is a, a, the passenger version. So it's, there's gonna be three versions available, two seat, per, two seat commercial, five seat commercial, and a five seat passenger. So when we move to the inside, you'll see, again, the Recaro seats in the back. You'll also see a mock-up uh, just underneath the vents, which is the PTO, so your electrical power takeoff unit. You'll have USB ports as well. It's as modular as you can imagine the vehicle can be. Uh, the commercial five-door, ver uh, five-seat version, the rear bench will be 80 mil further forward. The backrest will be more upright. You can get your Euro pallet in the back payload is yet to be confirmed and I believe as we said already it's going to be about late April before all the figures are announced. Uh, I'm going to show you the exterior panel. Now some people have been asking about this already. Now before I go on to this panel which is known as the utility belt I will talk about this. This is everyone's nightmare if they own a defender because people will think oh my god they're going to steal my doors. This is just an aesthetic it's a nod to utility and dare I say defender it, they're bonded on with structural adhesive so the same stuff that you use in aviation airplanes and Lotus and other car manufacturers which have been doing it for the last 20 odd years it's effectively seam welded on so if someone tried to steal your doors they would tear the whole door frame around the hinge itself to remove it so it's not going anywhere so again it's just simply an aesthetic now with regards to these panels here you normally have molding panels like so uh, or you can option the utility belt the utility belt again it's proven technology uh, you'll find them in vans commercial vehicles warehouses uh, you will find uh, that you can they are primarily used for racking, boxes, netting, panniers, you name it. Anything to hang or whether it be at a table, whatever it may be, you can hang from this exterior panel here. The front door will hold 110 kilos of weight. The rear door will hold 80 kilos of weight. The roof will hold 150 kilos of weight, just on the roof skin itself. Then you have the optional Rhino rack, which they're in, uh, in development with with regards to the full length roof rack and other options this panel is yet to be confirmed in terms of weighting and what have you only simply for the fact that on this prototype they have this little compartment uh, the original idea was that it's a wet compartment so you can put your gloves or other accessories or whatever you have in your ha uh, on you into there so it's not in the cabin they realized once it came out you couldn't really get your hand all the way down so what they've decided to do is basically make it a standard quarter panel and as a result uh, we have something at the back which we can show you in a second that particular compartment may be switched over to the inside as well we move to the tyres and the rims, so you've got 17 inch steel wheels, 18 inch steel wheels, uh, 17 and 18 inch alloy wheels as well. This is the all terrain tyre, so again if you're going to be doing any type of off-roading or going over landing or whatever it may be, so it's a, a, a proper multi-purpose vehicle as it were, all terrain tyres are the ones to go for unless your vehicle is going to be strictly uh, or 99.99 percent on the road road duties uh, a lot of people have said 
about the steel wheels why is it not a five stud pattern they are a six bolt stud pattern for the simple fact that there's the most popular uh, aftermarket wheel option available for utility vehicles pickups and what have you so you've got a huge amount of accessories available for you from the word go springs and dampers all round no air suspension no leaf springs leaf springs are incredibly cheap to manufacture they are literally horse and cart technology uh, and they work perfectly but when you drive it on the roads they are just absolutely horrendous to drive on the roads it's fun for about 15 minutes but then it starts grating on your nerves and you just wish for some <laughs> something more comfortable air suspension uh, very uh, comfortable ride but uh, no air suspension for the simple fact that they're unreliable now you can see down here you have the side step now you will have a couple of options when you do go on a configurator with the Ineos Grenadier you have the side step and you have the the rock slider again if you're a hardcore off-roading enthusiast the rock sliders would be the one to go for in conjunction with uh, the underbody protection just give yourself as many options as possible if you are going off-road 99.99 percent .99 of other people will be using the side steps it is a bit of a the ride height is yet to be absolutely confirmed at this point in time things have been signed off but again everything will be announced accordingly but the side steps are the most practical option for you if you're using a vehicle on a daily basis and it's just a daily vehicle as opposed to like a leisure vehicle I need a trampoline to get into the back so because <laughs> I'm quite small I'm not as tall as Lex unfortunately but yeah go for the side steps if you are using it on a day-to-day -day basis or if you're short like me uh, <laughs> when we move to the rear uh, you will see the circular lights again a nod to uh, utility uh, LED lights front and rear now the thing is you might think okay it's just an led light but because it's circular and because jim ratcliffe is a chemist by by profession by trade as it were and an incredible businessman and an engineer as well regardless of which side you damage normally if you damage a headlight or a unit it's handed left or right if you damage the left or right hand side of this particular in this grenadier you just buy the one single light bolt it on left or right half the production cost just keeps you moving again just clever engineering for example the small door that we have here again if you tow anything uh trailer anything you a you can't open the door if it's a full-size barn door uh, as you'd normally find on most vehicles whereas with this little door as you open it up you can find that you can reach in grab your bits and pieces without having to move the vehicle forward or unhitch yourself from the, uh, from the trailer or horse box wherever it may be this surface again it's an interior prototype this will be changed to a rubberized material uh, you can see the tie downs here they are very deep but again because it looked good on computer once they built it they realized we, things can be improved so they've made it flush uh, and less likely to collect dirt and easier to actually access uh, again you can see the inner arch liner uh, it is sloped someone made a comment if I put my cup of coffee or my tea there it will just slide straight off so they took it on board and what they did they squared it off so now it's a step so now you can stack on top of it so they've reprofiled it redesigned it so it's flat so when you do stack you can stack it properly you can get your euro pallet in this vehicle uh, with the five seat commercial version the seat will be 80, 80 mil further forward uh, you have the option of roof netting as well these pins up here uh, they refer to the locking pins either side so it increases the vehicle structural rigidity so that pin there and that pin there locks into these points and then the door folds in it just increases the torsional rigidity of the vehicle you add the combination of the chassis and the body shell together it just makes it you can literally park it up on a massive uh, pile of rocks gravel whatever it may be jump out open up the back doors and close them again and the vehicle will be completely fine you just close one door close the other one other vehicles you close one door and the other door will be like 15 feet down <laughs> no, it'll be further down moving to the rear you got your two towing eyes as well uh, and they're bright red as well so you can't really miss them obviously from an emergency perspective point of view as well for recovery uh, people at least they know where everything is uh, 
Underneath the cover plate, you'll find your tow bar mounting. It's pre-drilled, it's pre-wired as well. So you've got the option of NATO, European and US spec. Again, once it bolts on, you'll find the plugs and harnesses to plug into the interior electrics. Uh, same with the winch. If you purchase the front winch, uh, they will increase the spring rate of the vehicle as well. Uh, you have this panel here. That's where the camp table will be. So I believe they're still deciding which way the configuration is going to be, whether it hinges up or if it hinges down. But either way, you will have your camp table so you can enjoy the scenery around you. Uh, moving round to the front of the vehicle or towards the driver's side. Oh, actually, before we do, uh, again, another point with regards to the engineering. So normally when you have a tyre, spare wheel, they just bolt it on. I'm not singling out defenders, <laughs> but normally you have a tyre, you have a very, very long bracket and then it bolts on. That, what that tends to do, it tends to damage the door. It destroys the hinges as well because of the weight of the actual tyre itself. The hinges are reinforced and what the Enios engineers have done, they flip the wheel around 180 degrees. So where the face of the alloy or the uh, steering wheel is, uh, sorry, not steering wheel, the actual wheel, it's next to the tailgate, which means you've got a huge void here, which means you have extra additional cubby space. So you can put your gloves, your tow ropes in and what have you. So again, bumper is modular, uh, so it's a three piece bumper. So this is the cubby hole I was mentioning to uh, mentioning about. You can put because it's the back side of the alloy or the, the steel rim, steel steel rim tire. You've got all this space to use. Again, no one's ever thought of it before. It's the most simple, elegant solution, but they've did it. Bumpers are three-piece bumpers, so they're modular. So you don't. So for example, you damage the corner of the uh, of the bumper. You don't have to buy the complete bumper. You just buy the section that you need. It comes with front and rear parking sensors. It will have a option of a park uh, reversing camera as well. So again, all these details, heated seats and what have you. I think they're just going to be. They will be finalised at the point of uh, announcing the prices. Uh, my colleague Miles is just chatting about uh, something inside, but that's fine. We'll talk about the lashing points. Uh, the lashing points, they are structural, so you can tie things to the roof and use those lashing points as, as fixings, as it were. You can also lift yourself up onto the roof using a side step and pulling yourself up as well. I'm not going to do it because <laughs> I'll probably fall off. Uh, when we move to the driver's side, Again, being a prototype, uh, certain things will change. So for example, the door pockets or the cubby storage is very, very small. Uh, that will be changed so you have more interior space and like oddments space and what have you. You can see it's a material uh, finish. Again, that will be all hydrophobic. So it'll basically water resistant and water repellent. Uh, so this will be a visual representation of what the passenger and the commercial versions would look like. So the Recaro seats, uh, the center console, uh, no mechanical, uh, no electrical adjustment on the steering wheel, uh, sorry, on the seats themselves. It's all mechanical. Uh, nuts and bolts, you have a mechanical handbrake as well. You also notice the steering wheel, which is the saddle lever. Uh, it's aniline lever, so the reasoning or the, the thought process behind it was uh, your favorite pair of shoes, the more you wear them, the more they kind of wear, they become part of you, they become patinated. Same thing with the steering. The steering wheel is your journey with the vehicle itself. As you own it, you drive it, you enjoy it, it wears and it becomes part of you. Same with the uh, handbrake as well. So you've got the option of the saddle lever, which is aniline undyed lever. Again, it's a mechanical handbrake as well. The center console, uh, and just above it, you'll see the multimedia system. That will house all your functionality, so your side slope, your, uh, 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 what do you call it, uh, your sat nav. <laughs> Sorry, I've just, I've just, uh, right, yeah. So with regards to the, to the center console, you'll have your speedo, all your functionality. Uh, it uses Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. Uh, so no sat nav unit. You just connect your phone, and then you'll have. Uh, oh. <laughs> you will have all your functionality and your set and your maps are up to date the moment you turn it on so no need to go back to the dealers to get a map update in about two years time uh, the, the 
section just here, people have asked what it shows. It's going to be all your warning lights and what have you. So for example, your glow plug if you have a diesel, your lights if they're on, your indicators. The, people have mentioned will there be a speedo in the middle. As far as I know, no. But again, being a prototype, uh, it may change. This thing up there, uh, you can just see just in front, I'll close the door, is the raised air intake. So it's not a sealed unit, it's not a snorkel. Uh, it's If you're in very, very dusty conditions or if you're in convoy, it gives you a, a fresh uh, source of clean air. Again, being a prototype, the fit and finish is, is exactly that. It's just a show vehicle. Uh, the vehicle has an 800 mil wading depth as well. So I know the new Defender has a 900 mil wading depth, but it does have air suspension as well. <laughs> and it'll probably be unreliable. <laughs> uh, again, springs and dampers, as you can see, uh, the progressive springs, because its chassis is so stiff, uh, they've been able to tune the springs and dampers accordingly. So it gives you a very, very comfortable ride on the road. I'm not a salesman, I'm a product specialist. I've been driving this car since last year, on road and off road as well. And I can vouch for the comfort of the ride on the road as well. Again, vehicles cannot be anything but brilliant in everything that they do. Uh, and it's degrees of separation at that point in time. But again, with the best of the best technologies that's gone into it, the who's who of like manufacturers, BMW, ZF, uh, Carraro axles, uh, Magna Star, who've been developing the vehicle, it's gonna be a winner. So buy one, <laughs> please. <laughs> so uh, we came, we saw, we conquered. I don't know if that works, but I am so, so grateful to actor. You've all seen how He's been so patient, answered all of our questions, uh, took his time to take us through the Grenadier. Uh, I couldn't have asked for any more. And again, I think, you know, this in a way speaks to the customer service you will be getting uh, from becoming a part of this brand. Uh, I'm really looking forward to getting into the Grenadier and being able to drive it. But if, if, if anything, the service I've received today has been top notch. And thank you, actor. Thank you so much. Absolute pleasure. I'm going to shake your hand. <laughs> thank you. Thank I'll you. See you soon, cool. And uh, there you go. We've done it. We've seen it. We loved it. And uh, looking forward to getting inside of it and driving it. Cool. Take care and look after yourselves. Bye. Bye.